Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We'll, be, we'll just read verse 1 through a few verses here, and then we'll, then we'll pick up on our act, what we're doing. And now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Now, as we said a couple weeks ago, the word spiritual in the Greek, um, and the word gifts in the Greek is not there. It is, a, it is italicized, and, and at least in the King James Bible, but the reason it's italicized, it's not in the Greek. Because it's not in the Greek, the translators added it for the purpose of what they thought would bring clarity. Um, however, because it's not in the Greek, uh, we, we're going to leave it out because it, it does give a misnomer here uh, concerning these, these things of the Holy Spirit. Now the word spiritual in the Greek is plural, so it should read something like this. Now concerning spirituals, brethren, I would not have you either. The import here is things, as, as Dad Hayden used to say, things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Okay? So we now so concerning things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't have you ignorant. See, God doesn't want us to be ignorant about the things of the Spirit. Amen. God wants us to be in the know about the things of the Spirit. Not in that ignorant, but in the know. Okay? And so he says that. He says, he goes on, says, You know that you were Gentiles. We talked about that. The Gentiles meaning non natural descendants of Abraham, the Jew, non spiritual descendants of Abraham, the church, Gentiles, heathen, lost. Unsaved. Okay? Uh, you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. You can't get up and say, Yea, the Lord hath said that Jesus is a curse. That's not the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It might be a ghost, but it ain't the Holy One. Right. <laughs> and it ain't Casper. Okay? I mean, Beelzebub, devils, I mean, all kinds of that stuff, but it ain't Jesus. I mean, it's not the Holy Ghost. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And I look, now, um, I explained this last week, uh, a couple weeks ago, I think here, but I know it didn't listen last night. Whenever the Spirit of God is in manifestation, it should magnify and lift up Jesus. Amen. Whatever's going on should lift up and magnify Jesus. Amen. Should not cause you to be in awe and reverence of the man in the Amen. sense that it's man worship. Amen. Or that you go crazy and whatever he says is, oh, he's, he is, and you just walk around like a dumb, you know, blind sheep following a cowbell or something. I mean, you just, you cannot do that. If the Holy Ghost is in manifestation, it will magnify Jesus. How do you know? Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. So when the Spirit of God is in manifestation, the Lordship of Jesus is magnified. If the Holy Spirit is not in manifestation and there are things happening and Jesus didn't lift it up, it's not the Holy Ghost, it's a man, so it's the wrong spirit. Right. Now, a number of years ago here in our town, when we first came to Greensboro, the first summer we were here, so that was like we came in September the next summer. Uh, we had interim pastor through that first summer, but the next one we were here permanently, a guy came to town. I won't call his name because that, that's no benefit. He hadn't been back since. But a couple of people in church had gone the year before and they came back. Oh, he's great. He's awesome. He, oh. Well, they were in part of the service and something happened. He said, oh, it was a good time to take up an offer. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Woo, 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 woo. When there's something, there's something spectacular that happens and they stop and take up an offer, run. Because they're using that to melt the people. You don't take up an offer just because somebody got healed. Then you're, then you're prostituting the anointing. Yes, Okay, we don't do that. All right. Now it's, it's one thing if it's time to, if it's the time in search you normally receive the offering, but you don't go, oh, this is a great time to stop taking up the offering. Well, mm -hmm. so this this minister gets up and turns to his his uh, cohort that travels with him in the middle of service and goes, and goes, I've never done this before, but God's leading me to receive an offering in a certain way. Well, those two guys were there, and they were so disappointed. See, here at the point they were just all in awe of how great he was. He did the exact same thing the year before, but he got up that verse and said, I've never done this before, have I? I've never done this before. And did exactly what he did a year before. See, people forget, they get so busy conning people, they forget where they were before. And what they did where. Hello? See, that's, see, see that lifted up the man, not Jesus. And they, they milked the congregation for their offering. And because, you know, he, oh, he's in the spirit. I've got to give. It's God. We want to magnify Jesus, don't we? No man calls Jesus Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. 
Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Different uh, diversities of operations, but the same God that's working all along. Notice it's God, Lord, and uh, Spirit that are working here. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to profit with all. Amen? I'm sorry, did I, did I, did I miss something there? Probably. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith or special faith, as the Amplified Bible says, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, and at verse 20 it says gifts of healings. Uh, we'll get to that when we start talking about that. About the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another, and King James has divers, divers is not in the Greek, but it's of kinds of tongues. Divers means different. But so, you know, but it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it, it could be tongues of angels or men, it could be a language, you, it could be an earthly language you just don't know, okay? And to another, the interpretation, not the translation, but the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh, who worketh it? That one and self same spirit. Divine to every man severally as, who wills? He wills. He wills. The spirit wills. Will. Hallelujah. For the body is one and it has many members, and we're not going to go there, but all members of that one body being many are one body, and so it also is Christ. So, we have here a list of gifts, uh, but he says here in verse, um, oh, uh, verse 11, um, let's see here, but the master, verse 7, I'm sorry, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. What, so, so here really, uh, because the word gifts, remember we said verse 1 says spiritual gifts, I don't have your, we have your, but it's not gifts in the Greek, it's not there. So things that pertain to the Holy Ghost, verse 7 calls them manifestations, mm -hmm. but the manifestation of the Spirit. Now, because people have used the word gift and used it wrongly, the word gift comes from charis, which is a uh, you know, gifting or um, you know, favorite, can be, it's also translated um, grace. You know, the, the gifts of uh, the charisma. Chris, Chris is grace, charisma is, is gifts or, or endowment or, or whatever. Okay, along those lines. But he gives verse 7 because of manifestation. Well, it's the manifestation of the Spirit. It's not a gift you got and you just run anytime you want to. Right. Okay. If I give you a lawnmower as a gift, you can go out and cut your grass anytime you want to. You may not ever want to cut it. And you may look at your young son who's a strapping football player type and time for him to grow up and be a man and he can go cut the grass. <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> He's shaking his head. He's going to have to cut twice. <laughs> Don't you want to cut the grass? It's good for you. Yeah, I'm going to give you a lawnmower this week so he can cut the grass. He don't even cut that much. We got a ride lawnmower. You got a ride lawnmower? He just kind of looked at it. You don't got to take that down and give him a push mower. All right. <laughs> he got a push mower. He cut a little bit of grass. I, I'm messing with you now. All right. But, you know, you know, if I can give you a lawnmower, you go, you know, it's a gift you can use any time you want to. But, see, the Holy Spirit's not like that. You just can't walk in and prophesy any time you want to. All right. Amen. You can't give a word any time you want to. Amen. You can't work a miracle any time you want to. It says the Spirit wills. Mm -hmm. It's the manifestation of the Spirit. Dad Hagen said this. He said there has to be an unction for the gifts to operate. Right. That's right. right. The Holy Ghost must give you an unction to function there. And I, and I think I should. Did I share about the Copeland prophecy a couple weeks ago? Uh -uh. I didn't. Okay. I so. But I was at Ramah. And I had a word for Brother Hogan. Oh, yes. okay. yeah. You remember that? I was, I, I was in the congregation. The word of the Lord came to me. I heard they had this prophecy for Kim and Copeland. Oh, yeah. And everything was there except one thing. The unction. Oh, and five minutes later, Brother Hagin turns around on the platform, looks at Kenneth Cole, says, Kenneth, come here, and begin to give him that word. Same thing I had, but he had the unction, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't function, and you can't function without the unction. Right. Right. And I talked about how I used to be in the prayer, the, the college prayer meeting. We had the prayer chair, and somebody sit down there, and everybody gathered around, and how everybody had a word for him. Right. And it was all pie in the sky, glorious. It was wonderful. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Oh, the Lord says this and all that kind of stuff. And everybody took turns saying stuff over the, the same stuff over and over again. And then somebody else get in the chair and they all gather around and everybody prophesy over them. I say prophesy, that's what they said they were doing. It wasn't prophecy. They were just spewing out words without the unction. Now here's the thing. You could have in there somebody actually get unction. But nobody knew the difference. Because when anybody, there was nobody judging, nobody discerning it. Okay? And we, we, we get groups nowadays. They come along, they'll, they'll, they'll even go down to the children's church and youth church, and they'll have all gathered around, put one of the kids in the middle, and then the teacher will go, now whatever word or a picture comes to your mind, say that. Where's the unction? You're teaching them to just yield to whatever comes to their head. There are many voices in the earth, but none yeah. without signification. Amen. And not every voice is the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Amen. So they're doing the same thing we did back in that college prayer. I mean, it got off in the, the weeds and got off in left field, and then we got so squirrely as, as a squirrel on 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 uh, on uh, espresso. <laughs> and they're bad enough as it is without espresso. <laughs> I had a squirrel helping my bird feeder yesterday. I went out on the neck and he ran off a little bit. And I'm standing there with a pellet gun. He comes back. I'm, I'm this far from him. My deck rail's here and the bird feeder's just beyond my reach, okay? He comes up the bird feeder looking at me. <laughs> Pow! Right in the belly. <laughs> he flops and pops, gets on deck and runs off. You know, I'm like, are you kidding me? Go come right up here and look at me. And get into my bird seat. <laughs> yeah, that's for the birds, not for you. Now, did, did my brother put uh, uh, Vicks vapor oil on his? Oh, this girl run across the yard dragging, trying to get it off of his belly. <laughs> I, I ain't gone that far. I've seen people put uh, hot hot stuff on, on Vaseline on where the squirrels are. He gets on the paws. I'm not cruel. I just, uh, I'll leave him up so he won't come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But no, you have to have the unction of the Spirit. And we said this a couple of weeks ago, but I'm kind of recapping a little bit. The reason that prophecy and tongues and the interpretation of tongues are the most misused is because they're the easiest to mimic. You can't put somebody in the middle of the crowd and get all the people and say, now, whoever gets a miracle, work it. Wow. You'll know if it's the Holy Ghost real quick. Right. Whoever has a gift of healing, heal them. You know, whatever whatever gift comes up, heal them. You know, uh, that kind of thing. See, with that, if you don't have that, you know, tell me what. Look into the spirit. See what need better. What angel sitting there with them right now? See, these are the things you can't fake. Right. So it's the, the, the vocal gifts are the easiest to mimic. Because anybody go, yay, the Lord says, and because they got a little. <laughs> Just because you get a little woo don't mean anything. I've got woo woo when some commercials for certain horror movies come on. You go, that, that's a demon in that movie. You know? I don't go see him, but you just, just a commercial come on your television. You go, my God, that's devilish. You know? You, you get hoo, you get the heebie jeebies. All right. So we can find these weaknesses. So here we go. Number one, you have to have the unction to function. Right. You have to be inspired by the Holy Ghost. You just don't step out in faith and prophesy. There's no basis for faith. Hello? I said there's no basis for faith. In other words, there's no guarantee you have, that they're manifest as the Spirit wills. So you don't have the basis to say, I'm going to operate the gift of prophecy right now. And, and I do it by faith. You can't do it by faith. And that sense of confessing it and stepping out in faith to do something that's not in an unction for it. Okay, that's different. Now, if the unction is there, you still step out by faith and obedience to God, but it's not the same as trying to step out by faith and make it happen. Yeah. Okay, in that sense, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, we're going to prophesy. Everybody will prophesy. I was in a church service one time, and the minister goes, have you ever prophesied everybody? Turn around to the person next to you, lay your hand on and prophesy over them. Everybody in the building did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While I was walking out the back door to the fort. Mm -hmm. I know I have a part of it. They ain't putting their hand on my head and saying nothing either. Mm -hmm. And that, that particular person believed that you could prophesy one by one. That, and he didn't really read the Greek right and the scripture right when he said that. We all have the ability to prophesy. We all have the capacity. Because right? we can all be used by God. Yes. So the Greek really bears out. We all have the capacity or have the ability, but that means you can do it. Right. Why? Because you've got to have the unction to function. Right. Amen. You've got to have the anointing of the Holy Ghost manifest to do those things, yeah. to step out there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now you may sense the Spirit of God doing something. You may get in tune with Him, trying to trying to see what He wants to do. That's what I was happening when I was getting that word for Brother Hope back in that one about seminar back in the mid nineties. I I knew God wanted to speak to Him. I knew what He wanted to say, and I'm sitting. I'm arguing with the Lord. To, you know, uh, Lord, I, I got this, but I can't give that to Brother Copeland. You know, if I walk up that platform, all the rainbow ushers are going to drag me out, put me in some room somewhere, and take me up, and have the police come and investigate me. I'll never hit the platform. You know. And they would too, but they carry them out, carry them out up over top before. <laughs> you know? I mean, just, you know, I was, I was back in the early 80s, we were there for um, alumni week. No, it wasn't alumni week. It was, it was, a, it was a special, it was, it was a, just a special meeting with Lester Summerall. And up out of the Rooker Memorial, this guy stands up and starts walking toward the platform. When he hit the front row, three ushers stood up and just got him right out of the building. 
<laughs> then, no, nobody made a big scene about it. But when he hit that, he hit the last step of that first that that, that first row to the platform, right out the door. <laughs> and if you walked like I'm looking there, you would have never known it happened. <laughs> Now you were looking on the internet and saw Pastor S. Faith. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to give a word to the prophet at Winter Bible. <laughs> Tulsa County Jail. All right. <laughs> now, that's, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord, 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 Lord. But I, I, there's something, there was just something that wasn't right. Because I've obeyed the Holy I've obeyed the Holy Ghost. I've been in services, uh, not, not at Rainbow, but at other services, and I've been in coastal services. The Piney Grove Camp Meeting down in Chocolate in North Carolina. Gave, you know, I had tongues and interpretation of tongues as a young, young person in the Lord. I, I, I'm not afraid to step out in the congregation. But you got to have the anointing of God. And you can't teach people just to give some word or something. Well, you're, you're trained into this, this list of anything that comes in their head. Uh -huh. And you don't know if it's God or not. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, like, it's like the guy was laying out one day in, his, uh, in the field looking up at the sky, and the clouds formed the letter GP. And he went out and started preaching and fell flat on his face. And after he fell flat on his face, he just got so discouraged, he went to the Lord and prayed. He said, Lord, what's going on? I'm falling flat on my face. And, he, and uh, you said to me in that cloud, you said, GP, go preach. And the Lord answered back and said, that wasn't go preach, it was go plow. <laughs> go back and plow the fields. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, we, you know, we have to have that anointing. Now, these are divided up into three categories, vocal gifts, prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Power gifts, now what do the vocal gifts do? They say something. What do the power gifts do? They do something. So you got special faith, working of miracles, and gifts of healings. They do something. And then you got the revelation gifts. They what? Reveal something. A word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. That's not the gift of judgment. <laughs> All right. That doesn't discern the yeah. spirits. But half the time, that's just you being judgmental. Um, you know? yeah. Yes, we should discern things, but that's not the gift of the discerning of spirits. It's very specific, the discerning of spirits. You see into the spirit realm and you see what's in operation, demons or angels. So you step in. When you have vision, people have visions of Jesus or vision of angels. The gift of the discerning of spirits is a manifestation. You see demon spirits. No, they, you know, they don't be around looking for devils. You don't want to see them in the first place. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah. Brother Hagen in times was praying there in prayer lines and come up on somebody and, and there was a demon on the, he saw in the spirit, saw a demon on the person. He wasn't healing, he needed the demon cast out of him. Mm -hmm. All right. So he cast that devil out of him and the guy was the guy was healed instantly. That demon was enforcing that sickness on him mm -hmm. and just prayer for healing wasn't working. Okay. They saw him to the spirit. See, why God had the discerning spirits? He knew he was dealing with something different than just a, a disease. Mm -hmm. He was de dealing with something being enforced by a demon spirit. And that had to be dealt with. Okay? So the, so the vocal gifts say something, the power gifts do something, and the revelation gifts reveal something. So let's talk first of all about the revelation, I mean about the vocal gifts. And um, we, will, we will talk uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 primarily on this. There are three of the vocal gifts. They are the gift of prophecy. This is not uh, foretelling. As in the Old Testament, the prophets would come and they say, Yea, the Lord says this. Because you've done this, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. This, that is forth telling. Right. And actually, it is the gift of prophecy in conjunction with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. In other words, yeah, the Lord says, because you've done this, which the prophet may not have known about, I'm going to do this. So word of knowledge, something's already happened. Word of wisdom, something's going to happen. In conjunction with uh, prophecy. Now, prophecy means to speak by sudden divine inspiration of God. Many people who preach are prophesying. Right. They're getting into that anointing. They say, I'm going to tell you something. There ain't nothing like it. Sure there just ain't nothing like it. Now, listen, I teach a lot now, but I am telling you, there is just nothing I love better. I just love it when that anointing to preach comes. And it is a spirit of prophecy that comes. And you just begin to speak out a sudden divine inspiration of God. And all of a sudden, I'm, tell I'm just telling you, it just it's just stuff you can't even think of. It's just coming by the Holy Ghost. Right. Woo! Glory to God. I love that. But you got to teach, and you know, you got to have to teach, and I just, in fact, I, I used to, some of you don't, weren't here, but I used to preach a lot, all the time, but then, church had to grow up, <laughs> so I get to preach every once in a while now, that's what preacher, uh, the, the brother, hey, he used to say, if you ever seen his um, uh, uh, video, El Shaddai, um, that was, that was, he said he used to preach like that all the time, so he goes so fast, you couldn't understand what he was saying, he just preached, you know, El Shaddai, 
You may ever seen that video from Brother Hagin? It's on the internet. You need to go look it up and see it. Okay. El Shaddai Kennedy Hagin. Okay. It's it's old. He's got a plaid thing. The, the, the color stated. Sister Lynette has a beehive hairdo. <laughs> Brother Ken got pork chop sideburns. I'm, you know, I mean, they got some, you know, plaid coats with striped ties and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's 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 from the early 70s, but it's it's good preaching. I'm still doing that. And some folks are still doing that. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We'll look down around verse 26. And it says here, um, How is it then, brethren, when ye are come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done in the edifying. Okay? Now, I, I was looking this up, and I was thinking, you know, well, yeah, sometimes King James says stuff that just doesn't... It conveys one thought when it's really not what the Greek was trying to convey. And at the time that it was written, it may have conveyed it, but in 400 years since, the languages have evolved. So it doesn't, kind of, it doesn't carry the same import. Like the word charity, when it was, it was used to translate a God for what the God kind of loved. Now when we think of charity, you're not in the way. You're in salvation. We think about giving somebody something. There's no real love involved. We're just being charitable. Right, right. But the word charity in the, in the King James was used to translate agape. The God kind of love. Okay, so his words evolve. How is it then, brother? Uh, or, or what should we say to this? In other words, what, what does all this mean? It's, you know, uh, how is it that when you come together, every one of you has a song, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done in the edifying. Now, here's Paul's here's Paul's quandary. The apostle Paul is writing to the church. And if you read his letter to the church of Corinthians, the Corinth, the first the first letter to the church of Corinth. It's a corrective letter. Actually, both letters are. There's a third and a fourth. They believe there's a third and a fourth letter. Okay? They believe there's a letter between first and second and one after third and second. Okay? Uh, and there's internal evidence that, that actually happened. And so they really believe that there were four letters written. We, we only have two of them. Okay? And it, because they re he refers to another letter where they talk about the man that was turned over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there, there, are, there are internal evidences here that probably were four letters to the church of Corinth. Why? Because it is messed up. They was excited. They just went to all stand up and prophesy. They wanted to all stand up and speak in tongues. They all just wanted to be the one that was just showing off. I got this thing. They watched me eat. Bye, 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 bye. People going to translate, ah, oh, glory. <laughs> and Paul says here, how is it when you come here? Everybody has one. You know? In other words, now, you could all. But why has everybody got one? Okay? Why does everybody have a tongue? Why does everybody have a, a song? Why does everybody have a doctrine, a tongue? Then he says this. Here, here's his whole key here. Let all things be done to edify the whole purpose of the manifestation of the Spirit was to edify the body. Remember back in the first part of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Right. It was to profit the church. The church was to receive profit from what the manifestation of the Spirit did. And as we said earlier, the first verse, first two verses tell us that when the manifestation of the Spirit is a manifestation, it's to lift up Jesus. Okay? Now, we used to have a lady back in our church that we came out of in, down, down east. Now, she would prophesy, quote, she would stand up and say something every service. Hmm. About every three weeks, she was in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All the other time, it's like somebody standing up over the whole church with a great big bucket of ice water going. <sighs> whatever we got out of worship, whatever was going on, just killed the whole thing. Right. Killed it. I mean, dead in the doornail. You know, she used the and does and the Lord says and the spirit of God's, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, does on oh, and oh. I mean, you're just, you're thinking. No. Okay, lady. And she's a nice lady. I like her. I like her. I think she's passed away now. But she's also the lady who prophesied with another person while they were praying that they were supposed to get married and they did. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's right. No, that's exactly right. <laughs> We were praying and the Lord spoke and said, we were supposed to get married. No, he did. She was old and needed somebody and you, you fell for it. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I'm just telling you the truth. Are you stinking kidding me? All right. Now, let all things be done unto edifying. So he goes on to say, if any man speak in another tongue. Now, let, um, we, we need to cover something here. There are two types of, 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 of manifestations of tongues. One is the manifestation of the Spirit to profit the body. It is for public address. 
Right. Mm -hmm. The other is private prayer life. Yes. Praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. right. Jude said, but ye beloved, building up yourselves in your mouth holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Paul writes here in 1 Corinthians, the beginning chapter, he that prayeth in the Spirit, or in the tongues, speaketh mysteries to God. Mm -hmm. When you're speaking to the congregation, you're not praying, you're speaking, you're addressing. Mm -hmm. right. So there's praying in tongues, mm -hmm. and there's addressing in tongues. Mm -hmm. The purpose of addressing in tongues is to be interpreted mm -hmm. by the, the congregation yeah. prophet. Yes. Now, people taking this chapter and misused it to prove tongues aren't for today or to demean tongues. Mm -hmm. And they're just wrong. Mm -hmm. However, it's like this. Prophecy is a dime. Tongues is a nickel. Interpretation of the tongues is a nickel. So it gives you 10 cents. Either one's 10 cents. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you know spending the dime is easier than spending the two, the nickel and the nickel. So it's of high, it's higher, but it's not, it's, you get the same thing. Mm -hmm. If I need 10 cents to buy something, I got a dime or I got two nickels, it doesn't matter, I still get what I came for. Mm -hmm. And so tongues and the interpretation, now not the, man, not the translation of tongues. Mm -hmm. It's the interpretation. It's the gist of the meaning. Okay? So, um, when I was preaching in Spain one time, we're down in, down in Barcelona, and they spoke, uh, they spoke Catalonian. They, 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 were, they, were, they were secessionists, they wanted to separate from uh, Spain. They were, they were, they were, you know, they were always, they, even the, even the word for cheese was different. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it, it was, um, uh, in, in, Sp in Spanish's case, so there was, there was like, it wasn't fromage, it was fromaggio or something, kind of close to the Italian. T Italian is uh, fromage, uh, from, um, French is fromage, Span Italian is fromaggio, and Catalonian is from something in between, kind of in between that. Okay. Now. You know, but you used to be saying stuff, and they would use, you, you use a, um, an example. Maybe priest say, it was happening in the pig and sunshine. They couldn't use that. They couldn't translate that because it wouldn't make any sense. So they would have to catch what you were saying and give a comparable, a, a, compre a comparative uh -huh. analogy in their whatever mm -hmm. to translate what I was saying. Mm -hmm. So they might say, you know, I don't know, um, they, they, they say, you know, turn your pocket, turn, you know, throw your hand up, turn your pocket loose, you know. And it meant something like, you know, give up all your money or something. I mean, it was, so they had different sayings. They would, so to get to the people who were hearing it, they would have to come up with a comparable analogy that was matching happening to the pig and sunshine. Because if they said pig and sunshine to the people, they would go, <laughs> uh-huh. You know, they just kind of sit there kind of going, whatever. So... Uh, this is what, so tone, interpretation of tongues is not the translation. Yeah. It's the interpretation of the gist of what it means. Mm -hmm. That's why you could have somebody get to talk, talk in tongues for 30 seconds and get a two minute interpretation, or they could speak in tongues for five minutes and get a 30 second interpretation. Mm -hmm. Whatever the Spirit of God needs to do to interpret into the understanding of the people. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now, it goes on, it says here, so let's get down to verse 26. Uh, okay, verse verse 27. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let him be by two or three, two or at the most by three, and that by course let one interpret. What's it saying here? Now, you get everybody out line up trying to get their tongue, and nobody interpreting, you're going to have confusion. Okay? And it's not the same thing as everybody worshiping and everybody sort of singing in the spirit or whatever. Because we're not we're not addressing anybody. We're addressing God. We're not trying to address another person. We're not trying to stand in front of the congregation and give a word and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. we're not, it, that's, it's, it's, it's part of worship. Mm -hmm. At the same time, in the middle of that, somebody might stand and start going, uh, you know, giving a, a message in tongues. Mm -hmm. There needs to be interpretation of that. There must be an interpreter or just hold silent. Mm -hmm. That means what? You're going to have to know about the Holy Ghost if, if there's someone there to, ter to interpret. Right. Mm -hmm. Before you can go stepping out, uh -huh. and then the person has, has gets that interpretation. Has to get, now, if three people you know go and you get, you get three interpretation, and all of a sudden you got five, six people trying to interpret, you know, the others just need to hold the peace and stand quiet. So people with extra tongues, I want to give a tongue. I want to do it. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> Paul's right. We don't need confusion. That's right. Amen. This isn't a race to show that you can do it. That's right. Amen. That you can be used. Amen. We want people to be used. Amen. We want people to step out by, by faith in the fact they have the unction to function. Mm -hmm. you know, they got it. They know it's God. They go ahead and start giving it. And, the, and then Satan having the pastor that he knows the Holy Ghost can go, 
you know, no, wait a second, no, wait a second now. Uh -huh. we've, all, we've, we've never done that. We've never had that issue with somebody really so far, and we had to stop it. Now, I'll, I'll, <laughs> back in 19, winter of 1980, uh, winter Bible seminar that year, it was, um, it was actually Holy Spirit seminar. Back then, we had, we had prayer seminar, and then we had Holy Spirit seminar. And there were two, two separate events. Eventually, they combined them and called them Winter Bible Seminar. Brother Hayes said, well, we put them together and called them Winter Bible Seminar because prayer and faith are both in the Bible. And the Holy Spirit are both in the Bible. Right. You know? <laughs> so, okay, Brother Hayes, that works. But that, that year was Holy Spirit Seminar, and it was in the winter. And uh, we, we, had went a, we had gone a week, and, and Brother Hayes got the end of the first week. and said, well, we need to go another week. Now, this is morning and night now. This is morning service. So the students were going in, having our assembly time, and we would all meet and having uh, the seminar at night. And then the, week, the extra week, got into the next week. We're going to be back here and pick up again next week. Well, during that next week, um, um, the Nanowskis were there for part of that meeting, and they were on Brother Hagin's board, and they were going to go home. Brother Hagin said, you know, I don't think you guys need to go home. He said, brother, oh, yeah, we, we got to get home. We got to get home take care of some stuff. And he said, I just don't think you should go. They, they said, oh, no, we, we're fine. We're going to go. Flew and got killed in the plane, plane, the plane crash. The plane crashed and killed him. Wow. Hmm. So that's where the Nanowski Center came from. came in honor of them. You know, so they said, you know, you know, people, you know, that people make mistakes. They think, you know, whatever. And uh, they, they, they can go ahead and go. They, they, they get, sometimes you get so busy doing, you forget to listen. And uh, so that third week, Dad was gone part of it. He said, well, we'll pick up and go again some more next week. And uh, he had to get the funeral like on Tuesday. Well, then Sister Wilkerson came and ministered. Woman who knew God. She would just open her mouth and the hair on the back of her neck stand up. This one, you ever heard? Have you ever heard of Billy Graham? Uh -huh. Have you ever heard Billy Graham get to talking real fast? Uh -huh. She got that from Sister Wilkerson. She used to sit under her feet, and that kind of got off on her. That that high pitched, you know, that was Sister Wilkerson. Oh, sweet, precious woman of God. One of the most dearest, precious people you'll ever want to ever want to meet. She's gone to be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, but but during that second week. We're sitting all over, we all can kind of come up around the front. Now, now Rooker held about 2,500 people. It was, at that time, Rainbow, Rainbow uh, Church Auditorium. It was a Rainbow Church Auditorium back then before they built the church. And we're all there at the front, all the students, all the people who came for the meeting, about 2,500 people kind of just had gathered up as close to the front as you could get. And Dad's up there, and he's just kind of sitting up there. You know, he's getting into the seat. See, when you know, uh, Vicki Jameson, he's talking about interpreting the flow of the Spirit. So you've got to know the Holy Ghost to be able to do that. And that's what we want you to do is learn about the whole you learn. That's why we don't put people in circles and say, just say whatever comes up. You're not learning the ways of the Spirit. Right. You're just dealing with anything that kind of, any kind of goosebump, pimple, whatever you get, you're just yielding to it. Mm -hmm. We want to learn the ways of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. We want to learn the voice of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So Dad's up there, and he's just standing there, and all of a sudden he goes, Sister Wilson, I believe the Holy Ghost wants to use you. And so here's people of the Spirit. They don't get uptight. Now, us young whippersnappers, you get 10 seconds of silence and we get up tight. We got to fix it. You know what I'm saying? And she just sits there. And dad just sits there. He's not up tight, she's not up tight. So after about, I guess, close to five minutes, we're just all sitting there. She's not up tight. Why? Because she's not moving until she gets the unction to function. See, he's picked it up in the spirit. But she ain't, just because dad picked it up, she ain't moving until she gets it. And all of a sudden, somebody figures, well, this ain't going the right way, I'm going to fix it. And they over here, they start blowing down, they start going, but the Lord says, hold that. <laughs> he said, go ahead, Sister Wilkes. <laughs> Praise God. And about another minute later, then she starts talking. I'm telling you. When she opened her mouth, it's like heaven opened up and the voice of God just flowed into the middle of it. Until the lifted up Jesus, you knew it was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But this person was so yielded to God that when the unction, the function came, they flowed in a depth and a way with the Spirit of God that just, I mean, they, your goosebumps got goosebumps. And I had a couple of goosebumps get the EBGBs and just kind of chill, chill all day in your spine. It was the Holy Ghost. I and mean, she just began to speak stuff by the Spirit. Oh my. For people who know the Holy Ghost like that again. 
We don't know the Holy Ghost in the church anymore. Brother Hagin said, if this generation, if he didn't carry the move of the Spirit to the generation before he went home, he said he lost for a whole generation. And, and I, I, I analyzed, a lot of people missed it. Missed the Holy Ghost. But God always has a remnant. Yes. God always has a people. Amen. God always has a group that did not miss it, that did not give up, that did not quit, that did not throw in the towel, hallelujah, yeah. who will hear the voice of God and flow in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And know that it's God and speak as the oracles of God and lift up Jesus. Praise God. Yeah. Then when they open their mouth, it's not some show how great I am and how yeah. wonderful I am and how great you are. And you know, I mean sometimes people are prophesying, quote, unquote, unquote, and they're talking about how great the person is. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that when the Spirit of God is a manifestation, it talks about how great the God is in the person. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And lift up him, hallelujah. Yeah. And you're going to do great exploits for God by the power of God that works in you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus gets magnified and Jesus gets yes, lifted up and Jesus gets glorified. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. A couple nights later, I wasn't there. I got, I got, I heard from everybody else because I had to work that night. Oh man, I was so mad. Uh -huh. Sister Brooks began to talk to Brother Hagin in the spirit. And I got to hear that. I hear it later. I got to be here to take. She began to say, oh, who are you? He's talking to an angel who's on a horse with a joust. He's walking through the congregation. He said, I've been sent from the throne of God to inspect the troops. <laughs> Anybody get chills just over that? Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, there's some rusty sorts here. But they're going to get straightened out before the end of the year. And that night, you've heard Brother Hagen talk about this. Some of you may have heard some tapes of him talk about this part. And the horse ran up, walked up on the platform. The angel on the horse walked, walked up on the platform. Dad Hagen leaned over and handed him something. And it was glasses in the spirit. He said, from this time forward, you'll see with greater clarity in the spirit and revelation in the word of God than you've ever seen here too far. <laughs> oh, About two weeks later, he said, and it is, it is. I've seen things I've never seen before. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, when, we, when, when we've got the unction, the function, and the Holy Ghost is a manifestation, you don't get some flowery, stupid mess people kind of giving you a word about, you know, peace. <laughs> that's the word, that's something, peace just like, I saw a picture of a butterfly floating by a flower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm mocking a little bit. Listen, you don't need to play with the things of the Spirit. No. You don't need to try to train people to function in something when there's an unction to function in it. We need to teach them to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and not just to imagery or words in your head. Because yeah, the things of the Spirit are the things of the Spirit and not of the head or the mind. Mm -hmm. yes. Hallelujah. Oh, for the days again, I believe we're, we're, we're yes. the church that would not quit and would not give up and would not compromise into the things of the world and doing it the world's way and having a world method and a world manner and having butts in the seats at any cost is going to see the glory once again. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 So the morning in here is that he's like, oh my God, what do I do with this? <laughs> I don't know where you are, but I'm under the spout where the glory comes from. <laughs> <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. I can do the elephant song. <laughs> Let's get him a rinky dinky. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, oh, for the church to rise up once again and hear the voice in the spirit and hear the words of the Lord, to have ears to hear what the spirit says to the church. Yes. And the Lord restores to the hearts of the hungry the sensitivity and ability to once again hear the deep and secret things of the Spirit and flow in the Holy Ghost and flow in the Spirit and speak the oracles of God and lift up and magnify the head of the church, the Lord Jesus himself. Oh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The master is coming soon. Much has to be wrought in the earth before he returns. 
the need for the church to be sensitive to him has never been greater. Never been greater. Never been greater. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.